I have the honor of introducing an incredible new voice in fiction, Georgia Hunter. Georgia's debut novel, We Were the Lucky Ones, is a vividly written book based on the true story of Georgia's own family, who were scattered at the start of the Second World War, but determined to survive and reunite. I was deeply moved by this novel and so impressed with Georgia's writing and exhaustive research into not only world history, but into her own family. I think Paula McLean said it best when she said that the true wonder of the book is how convincingly Hunter inhabits these characters. This is their story that Hunter is telling so beautifully and profoundly. And it's ours as well. We Were the Lucky Ones is a brave and mesmerizing debut and a tremendous accomplishment. Everyone, please welcome Georgia Hunter. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen, for that introduction. I'm so excited and honored to be here um, with this amazing group of authors. And um, as a first time author, I was really excited to hear that I get to speak with a group of librarians because. Libraries and librarians have played an incredibly significant role in the life of my life and in the life of this book. Um, starting with my research, I mean, I've relied on dozens of librarians to help point me down the path to find some obscure piece of information, to pour through card catalogs or digital databases. And then with the actual writing of the book, I mean, libraries, my local libraries were my home, away from home, my office for years. Um, this has been uh, almost a decade in the making this project. So I thought I'd first of all say thank you to all of you for all that you do. Um, it's very much appreciated. And I'd also like to give you a little bit of background on my research and kind of what this um, journey has entailed. Um, as Maureen said, this is based on a chapter of my family history and it's actually a chapter that I didn't know existed until I was 15 years old. Um, I grew up very close to my grandparents. They were a mile from my house in small town Massachusetts. Um, my grandmother Caroline and my grandfather Addie, who you meet in chapter one of the book. And we were very close. We spent a lot of time together, um, shared meals and holidays and birthdays. And so I still find it very interesting that for the first 14 years of my life, um, while I thought I knew my grandfather, and I did, and I loved him dearly. I was completely blind to this piece of his past that he had very deliberately put behind him. And that, that chapter would come to light a year after he passed away. Um, and a high school English, English teacher actually assigned our class a project called an eye search and tasked us with interviewing a, um, a relative to uncover a piece of our ancestral past. And with my grandfather's memory so fresh, I decided to sit down with my grandmother and it was then that I, I learned that my grandfather was not actually Eddie Kortz, but Addie Kirk, that he was born in Poland, not in America, and that he came from a family of Holocaust survivors. Um, I learned that he grew up in a town called Brodom in central Poland. He had two brothers, two sisters, and that he was the only one of his family living in France at the start of the war. And he told the story that his mother sent him a letter in the spring of 39 saying, Addie, I think you need to stay in, in France. It's feeling too dangerous for you to come home. And he tried his hardest to get home despite her <laughs> request and, and couldn't. It had become, borders were sealed. He could not make it back. And from that day on, he, he did not see his family for another seven years. He managed somehow to acquire a visa um, to Brazil, which I would later learn in my research was illegally issued. But he did get out of France, and um, he boarded a ship called the Alcina in Marseille uh, for what he thought would be a two-week journey. It ended up taking over five months with stops, uh, lengthy stops in North Africa. He arrived in Brazil with an expired visa. And my grandmother also told me that on that boat ride, he fell in love um, with a young Czechoslovakian woman named Aliska, uh, and they were actually engaged to be married. She also told me that once he finally did reach Brazil that he again, lost complete contact with his family, so had no idea, despite his best efforts to reconnect with them, whether they were back in Poland, whether they were dead or alive, or whether he would ever see them again. Clearly, this was an eye-opening interview for me, um, but it would be another five years before I learned that my grandfather's story was just a very small piece of the greater Kirk family saga, if you will. 
um, that each of his siblings and parents and cousins had stories to tell. Um, and that I discovered when my mother organized a family reunion. It was the first, actually, of for her, her side, paternal side, the Kirk family. She invited each of her nine first cousins. They all readily came. We numbered 32 in total with spouses and children, and my mother had everybody to our house in Massachusetts. And uh, it, people flew in from Brazil and France and Israel and all over the states, and it was pure chaos and pure fun. I met cousins I'd never met before. Um, and I was 21, just graduated from college, and one night I wandered outside to the back porch where my mother and her cousins, the older generation, was sitting telling stories. And I sat down on a picnic bench and listened. And stories shifted toward the war, and I remembered what my grandmother had told me about my grandfather. And this is when I started hearing snippets of his siblings past. For example, Jose, sitting next to me, who is one of my mother's cousins, <coughs> talked about how he had been born in Siberia, and he had no idea what his actual birthday was. He had no idea why his parents had been sent to Siberia, it's just that he was born in the winter. And his mother told him that it was so cold when he was a newborn that when he'd wake up in the mornings, his eyes would be frozen shut. And his mother would have to use the warmth of her breast milk to coax them op open. Um, another cousin talked about how his parents had been married in secret at the start of the war in a blacked out house with the only rabbi that was willing to come out of hiding with his candlelight service and air sirens wailing in the distance. Um, I learned about false IDs and a disguised circumcision and a hike over the Alps and unbelie these stories that just blew me away. Um, a harrowing, extremely harrowing mother-daughter escape from the Rodham ghetto. And I remember thinking, how am I just hearing these stories now? And how has no one written them down? <laughs> because these are remarkable. And so I, uh, I can't say that I left that reunion at 21 years old thinking I would write a book, but it, the idea was seeded. And it would take me eight years before I finally got the courage to tackle the, the project. But in 2008, I set off with my little digital voice recorder and my moleskin notebook, and I flew to Paris for my first round of interviews. And then it was to Brazil and all over the States, and I sat down with every relative I could possibly imagine and started to put together an oral history, and I formatted it at first into a timeline, because there were many people involved, many characters involved, with five siblings and spouses and children and parents. And I color-coded the timeline by, by sibling, and um, it was pretty incredible to see this document, this rainbow of a document, come to life. And I was struck by two things right away. One, the statistics of it, um, which actually I, I received a statistic from, with the help of a librarian at the US Holocaust Museum. I wanted to find out how many Jews from Rodham, Poland, where my family was from, survived. I knew there were about 30,000, a third of the population before the war, but I didn't know how many after. And with the help of a librarian, I found out that number was 300, fewer than 300. And when I started to do the math with my family, who numbered over 20, 22 in all, I was just in awe at the st statistical improbability of that um, survival rate. Um, I was also in awe that they were surviving in their own ways, not necessarily as a group. They were scattered. They were, while my grandfather was talking his way out of a detention camp in Casablanca, his sister was hiking over a river in Poland in the middle of January so she could get to Russian-occupied Poland to meet up with her then boyfriend who was making false IDs while another sister had tucked her three-year-old into a mattress and dropped her out the window of the ghetto in order to try to find a safer place for her to live. So they're all surviving in their own ways, trying to stay one step ahead at the same time. And so that helped me sort of shape the, the idea that I had, if I, this is going to turn into a book, I was going to need to write it from different perspectives, because often they had no idea of the whereabouts or safety of the, other, of the others. Um, there were holes, of course, in the, in the oral narrative, and those I tried to fill with research, outside research. So I reached out to every single library, museum, magistrate um, that I could possibly think of that might archive, that might have a piece of information that would be relevant. I actually hired, because the story 
is of one of such breadth. I hired translators to write um, letters to places in Russia and Poland and France and Brazil. And little by little, um, records trickled in amazingly, sometimes up to a year later. But I was able to find some incredibly rich um, detail, including like a nine page handwritten account of my uncle Gannick, great uncle Gannix, which described when he was arrested and sent to Siberia, what he was doing the day his son was born from the Hoover Institution out of Stanford, UK Ministry of Defense. Um, I was very lucky to have access to three Shoah interviews, which were recorded firsthand um, uh, experience of my of three survivors from my family. Um, and I was able also to sit down with Eliska, my grandfather's ex fiance Luckily, the romance didn't last. Um, but she was 88 years old, and my mother and I flew to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, after we tracked her down and spent two days with her and got this window into my grandfather's life in the early 40s and what it was like to leave home and everything he knew behind and start over in this unfamiliar land. Um, one of the things I get asked a lot, so my, my research, oral research, outside research came together into early forms of a manuscript and I get asked a lot why fiction versus nonfiction. And um, in the early stages, I felt like I stuck very strictly to every single piece of information that had been told to me or that I had uncovered in records. And what my manuscript was lacking was a little bit of that human aspect, um, a little bit of the color and the depth that would make it feel visceral and really memorable. And I wanted my readers to be able to feel like they were there. Like I wanted them to step into the shoes of my characters and my relatives and, and imagine what life must have been like. It's, it's hard to think about it from our perspective when those numbers are so vast, but when you can see it through the eyes of one family, I felt like that would be so meaningful and impactful. So I did allow myself the creative license to add those layers of color and the connective tissue, if you will. And my hope is that in the end, I ended up bringing the story a bit closer to the truth in that way. And I'll just wrap up by saying one of the things I love and have loved since I first learned to read about libraries is the idea that you can walk into a room and you're surrounded by these little windows into other worlds, these time capsules. And you, it's at your fingertips. You could go back in time. You can go ahead in time. You can see the world through any perspective. And the, just the idea of, of my book, We Were the Lucky Ones, offering a window um, for readers in one of your libraries is just such a thrill and an honor, and I couldn't be more excited. So thank you.